Hello and welcome to another video. This video is on Apollo 17, which was the last mission to the moon. The crew was made up of Command Module Pilot Ronald E. Evans, Lunar Module Pilot Harrison H. Smith, Schmidt, and Commander Eugene A. Cernan, who would be the last person to ever step on the moon until whenever the next person goes. <laughs> um... They took off on December 7th, 1972, and they launched on Saturn V with the lunar module and the command service module, and they had a rover on, Apollo th on Apollo's 15 through 17, they had rovers, so this one includes a rover. So here we have stage separation and ignition. And there goes the inner stage. And we're getting rid of this, or a quick save to get rid of this launch escape system because it falls off and breaks the docking port sometimes. And there we go. Quick save again. <laughs> I'm putting together a rocket where part of it's 3D printed. I'm making my own rocket. So I'll probably get that done soon and make a video on it <laughs> and we have stage separation and S4B ignition now and um, I was gonna add music into this video but I could I couldn't really figure out like how to do it without just like recording off of my laptop which I want I don't really want to ha want to do that so if you have any suggestions on how to get music in here, without like recording it off of a laptop or something, then please tell me. <laughs> you can tell me in the comments. So we're almost in orbit here, and now we've reached orbit. So now we're gonna do our translunar injection burn, which will raise our apoapsis so it intersects with the moon's orbit. And so that we'll be at the moon. <laughs> so we have ignition of that burn. And you can probably hear the lawnmowers outside. <laughs> so we're raising our apoapsis. And it's getting higher. There's the moon. And there we go. We'll have to do a bit of a correction. Wrong way. <laughs> so we're gonna turn around and fix that. There we go. They normally would crash the S4B stage into the moon once they're done with it, but I kind of forgot to do that in this. So it just flies by. And don't worry about the explosions that kept happening when I was testing this. So I just replaced part of the service module with the only part that would get damaged with the solar panel. See right there, because there's this glitch where the retracted solar panels are indestructible in the space flight simulator. So I just used that and now everything's fine. So we're gonna go in for our docking, which have to line everything up. And you can see the rover there Normally what they do is, in real life, they had, at the ro they had the rover like folded up inside of the descent stage to the orange part of the lunar module. But you can't do that in Space Flight Simulator, so I just had it attached, unfolded to the um, side of the lunar module, which you'll see later made it really hard to land. <laughs> so we're done with that stage. So we're going to do a mid-course correction burn here soon. Oh, a screen recording has been saved to photos. <laughs> I did not know that. Because <laughs> I totally did not press the button to save it. Oh, and then there we go. We've done our mid-course correction and coming up on the moon. We're in its sphere of influence, so we're... We're using its gravity now. 
and well, we have to turn retrograde and then burn our engine retrograde so we slow down enough to get into orbit around the moon. So there we are. And I actually changed this orbit on one of my landing attempts. So you'll see the orbit gets lower because this orbit, I kept using up too much fuel on the descent stage and not having enough fuel to land because the rover made me use up. It was a lot heavier, or added a lot of weight, so it made me use up a lot more fuel. So you see I get the command module away. Now we're in that lower orbit, as you see. And you'll watch the um, engine when I ignite it. It kind of, like, pushes the land... It kind of rotates the lander a bit because of the weight of the, ro of the rover on one side. Here, you'll see that in a second. So we're just time warping so we can get away from the service module and get to our apoapsis so we'll be more efficient. And here we go. Here, watch. See, it kind of goes over to turns and I have to fix it with the RCS, which is annoying because at the same time I have to use the RCS to help land because of the weight of this rover. So we're not in orbit anymore, and if we kept going, we'd just crash into the moon right now, but we need to keep slowing down. So we've slowed down quite a bit. In real life, they would not have this trouble with the landing because the folder would be, or the rover would be folded up. So what we're doing is just slowing down. In Space Flight Simulator, if you hit the ground at more than four meters per second, stuff blows up. You don't want stuff to blow up. That's not good. <laughs> also a problem with this lander was that once the fuel started running out, there wasn't enough weight on the lander part to like keep it stable, so it kind of started spinning out of control, which you'll see in a bit. So this is actually like my third or fourth attempt at landing. The first two, I did it from like a bad orbit, or the first three, two or three. I did it from the other orbit, and I couldn't slow down, and then I changed it to this orbit, and it was still really hard to land, but I got it. Okay, and we're 3,000 meters above the surface, and we're at 50 meters per second. 
yeah, here I shut down the engine to save fuel, and then also you'll see I had to transfer fuel from the ascent stage to get this to have enough fuel to land. Luckily, the ascent stage has an ion engine, which I actually did not have enough fuel to use. See, it's flipping out now. But I would, the RCS kind of, they run off of, for whatever reason, they're still able to run off of electrical power in this game, which that's really helpful. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, it kind of flipped out a bit there, you saw. And we're 1,000 meters at 35 meters per second. And we're coming up on our landing. We're, we had to land in this crater because I didn't really have enough fuel to get to the flat part. <laughs> or I didn't want to use up the fuel to get to the flat part because you see, we, or I tried to, but then it was like, no, I don't want to go to the flat part. And then it spun out of control. <laughs> Here you'll see I couldn't, it like spun out of control really close to the ground. So I just landed on the rover's wheels, which was kind of handy because those are kind of, they're a lot tougher than the rest of the parts. Not as tough as solar panels, but still pretty tough. Here, see? And I was lucky that that worked because sometimes I tried that and it broke one of the landing legs. <laughs> so we have landed, and that is awesome because <laughs> it was hard to land. So then I also got the rover off. That involved using the lunar module to like kind of kick it to get it to flip over. And then I drove it for a bit and then crashed it on accident, which I didn't show in this clip, but that's why there's not much footage of it. <laughs> and then um, the limb went up and, or I flew it up and it docked with the service module and the command, or the command module. So, I just did the normal docking, and just went up and used, I used the RCS, because I didn't have fuel for the ion engine. So, I just went up and went to orbit, and then got my approach close to the CSM, and then went in for the docking. Okay, so we're coming up on our docking. I think we're just like 700 meters apart or something right now. And we're almost there. <laughs> so all we have to do is just use the RCS to get a bit closer to the command module. And then line up the docking ports and go in and let the magnets magnet together. <laughs> Is that a verb? Like, can stuff magnet together? I don't think so. Right, there's the man service module right there. And we're time warping and not anymore.
Okay. So, time warping more. That was the door. <laughs> and then we're just using the RCS. We'll dock and then the astronauts, after they got back into the lunar module, the command module just let go of it and then the computer on board the lunar module crashed it into the moon's surface. Kind of like the S-4B, which all missions after from Apollo 12 to Apollo 17 had a seismometer that they put on the moon. And so they actually crashed these stuff in the S-4B and the lunar module into the moon for science to see how the moon would react to stuff crashing into it. <laughs> so you see it crashed there. And we just need to set the Earth as our target, and then we'll burn prograde now to make our apoapsis go higher from the moon so that we go back to Earth's atmosphere. So we're going into the window, and we have ignition on that, and then we shut it down because the window got too close, and then we have ignition again. And we shut it down again. <laughs> Then we have another ignition. And we want to get a good re-entry that's not too sheep and not too steep and not too shallow. <laughs> so that's pretty good. We'll adjust it a bit. sure not to time warp into the earth. I've done that many times before and it's really annoying. <laughs> and then we can get rid of that service module. We don't need that anymore. And we're about to re-entry and as soon as I hit the atmosphere, my capsule kind of started having like a spasm or something. <laughs> Where it just started flipping out of control and I couldn't stop it and I forgot that you could just like switch to another vehicle and it would stop spinning. So for like a minute it was just spinning out of control and then I realized, wait a second, I can just switch to another vehicle. Wow. So yeah, it's just spinning. And I was wondering if I would have to just tap the parachute and hope that I tapped the correct place <laughs> and not the stage separator that makes up the capsule because then the capsule would kind of break. So here's about when I just realized that I can switch to another vehicle in a second. <laughs> If this, if this had astronauts on it, they'd probably be dead, but they aren't in this, because Facebook Simulator doesn't have astronauts. Also, there's not a capsule inside of the capsule, there's just a probe. So now I finally realize that I can just switch to another vehicle. <laughs> and there we go, we're not spinning anymore. And in a second we'll have a deployment of those parachute. And parachute deployment confirmed. <laughs> and I'll give you the blueprints in a second. Here they are. And then that's the S2 and S4B and the spacecraft. And then here's the S1C. 